Hello everyone and welcome to another video of the Sky Channel. Now a lot of you have been asking me for videos about the vast jungle, so here is one of them. And in particular, in this one, I'm going to focus on the beta jungle. Essentially the jungle that I'm currently in. I'll talk about the experience in this jungle and I'll also talk about some of the updates that are going to be there for the next jungle and how the next jungles are going to differ from this current one. But before we get started, I wanted to tell everyone that we have a new promo code for Aptoid Sky 6. It's going to be valid all the way until May 30th, so it would be a good idea for you to switch to it as soon as possible because the Sky 5 promo code will expire on March 17th. For those of you who don't know, Aptoid gets you amazing bonuses on in-game purchases. You can get between 10 to 35% bonus whenever you purchase a pack in the game. This allows you, of course, to get stuff much cheaper as you'll essentially be spending lesser in the long run as opposed to how much you're spending right now. Additionally, there's an Aptoid bonus day on March 19th in UTC time, which essentially gives you an additional 10% on whatever bonus you have right now. This means that your bonus on that day is going to be between 20 to 35%, assuming you are using our Sky6 promo code. If you're interested, check out the video in the description, or you can join our Discord and ask us questions there to clear any doubts that you might have. Okay, going back to the video. So this is the beta jungle. And essentially what that means is that they're testing it out with a few of the alliances that signed up for this jungle. And that also means that there was definitely going to be certain imbalance, which they'll of course learn from and improve in the upcoming few jungles. And that's exactly what happened. So let's start talking about how the jungle was. So first of all, you'll notice that in this jungle, there were certain things that did give the red camp a little bit of an advantage. Firstly, the clear cost of the red camp was 2,500 wherever they went. However, for the blue camp, their own initial area, and that is the one that they are in, not any other initial areas, but their own ones, was 2,000. But anytime they went outside their initial area, it was 4,000. Now most of the jungles were either 2 versus 3, where 2 was the red camp and 3 was the blue camp, or 3 versus 4, where of course 3 was the red camp and 4 were the blue camp. If you do the math, each alliance of the red camp is able to build over 19 towers each day. Meanwhile, each alliance of the blue camp is able to build up to 12 towers each day. Interestingly enough, in a 2 versus 3, the red camp still gets more towers to build than the blue camp. Despite, of course, it being a 2 versus 3, the red camp gets 38 towers, while the blue camp gets 36. In a 3 versus 4, however, it gets even worse. The blue camp gets 48 towers, but the red camp gets 57. So that's the first advantage that the red camp has. But that's actually not the most major advantage. The major advantage comes from the fact that the blue camp, here you can see that we have 3 blue camp alliances and 2 red camps, the blue camp was locked in their initial areas only up until the first tunnels unlocked, right? And when the tunnels unlocked, they unlocked for basically all of us, including the red camp. Which means that the red camp and the blue camp both had similar opportunities to get outside of the crash zones and occupy buffs. Now the only thing is, as you notice I mentioned before, the red camp can travel further than the blue camp and hence capture more buffs. That's just an interesting twist to it, but what's even more interesting is that if you notice, the red camp has four areas where they can collect the buffs. However, the blue camp only has their three initial areas, which is their own initial areas to collect the buffs. Right? So what that means is that the red camp is able to collect all three clash areas and the tree zone buffs while the blue camp will be limited to only their initial areas. So in a 2 versus 3 you can see how this can heavily tilt it in the red camp's favor because now you have much higher buffs than the blue camp have plus you can travel further. Even in a 3 versus 4 this is still a major advantage because let's be honest you can get much better buffs like the level 9 wonders, the level 10 tree, and of course the residences in the clash area and the tree area are generally higher level as well, and hence they provide more buffs. 
They're also closer to each other, so it's easier for you to get them at the cost of a lower amount of prey, right? In the crash zones, everything is very congested. In the initial areas, things are pretty far apart. And you can see that even though the bullcat was locked within their initial areas, there's still some structures that they weren't able to reach. The other additional benefit to the red camp is that they actually get extra buffs whenever they're fighting. So the red camp actually has a 60% extra attack, 60% extra defense, and 30% extra health. However, if the battle is happening within the crash zone, they get an extra 60% attack, 60% defense, and 30% health, adding up to 120, 120, and 60. So that's another advantage that the two have. Now, I do want to show an example of how much buffs we collected on the first day of the war. And by the way, this happened closer to the end of the first day. And you can compare the buffs that the blue camp had versus the red camp. And that might show you what I'm referring to when I'm talking about buffs. Okay, so here's a report I have from the first day. And right now, the buffs that you're seeing are the red camp buffs. So notice the fortress occupation buffs. The second one, that's the one I want all of us to focus on. 262.8% attack. You can also notice that if you look at the bottom, there's the initial place buff because this battle happened in the crash zone. You get 60% attack and then the golden acorn camp buff, which you have everywhere, is another 60% attack. Next, let's go to defense. You can see that there's a 181.2% defense because of fortress occupation. Then, of course, you have those two at the bottom, which is the same. And now let's go to health you have 96.2% health from the Fortress Occupation and of course the two 30% bonuses because this was happening in a crash area. Now let's compare it with what the Blue Camp had. And here's the Blue Camp side from the same report. The attack, 128.4%. And of course they don't have any of those extra buffs that the Red Camp has, right? So 128% attack, 130.8% defense, and 55% health. In other words, we're looking at 134.4% difference in attack, 50.4% difference in defense, 41.2% difference in health, purely from the fortress occupation buffs. Add the additional red camp buffs that we already have. This adds up to a very large buff. That's not it though. Another thing is that the red camp actually does get certain other benefits as well. One of them being that the red camp's healing fungi is actually higher than the blue camp and the difference is approximately 25 percent so the red camp has 25 percent additional accumulation speed of fungi as well as 25 percent additional accumulation limit of fungi for each level of honor this of course means that they're able to fight 25 percent longer with their season soldier ends the interesting thing to add up to that is that they actually use four stamina per attack versus five this, in a way, means that the red camp is able to fight 25% longer than the blue camp. So each person will last, let's say, about 25% longer. So each of the red camp alliances can be considered 1.25 red camp alliances. So in a 2 versus 3, you're looking at a 2.5 alliances versus 3 alliances, excluding the buffs that we have already talked about. In a 3 versus 4, we're looking at 3.75 red camp alliances versus four blue camp alliances. And of course, add the buffs to it. That's another benefit that they have. But an additional thing to add to all of this is the fact that the red camp is able to get much more nodes. Now that's something that I haven't talked about before, but you have four areas to get nodes from, right? While the blue camp, each of them have only their initial areas to capture nodes. Because of this, we had a huge proportion of players who already crossed 40k honor before the first tunnels unlocked, while the blue camp probably had maybe 2, 3, or 4, I forget exactly, but the ratio was something like 28 to 2 or 28 to 4. Now that gives you a very large increase in the healing fungi that you have. We already talked about the initial benefit of getting an extra 25% healing fungi. But now imagine if all of the red camp is at 40,000 honor, but all of the blue camp is at 20,000 honor, they have roughly 
half of the healing fungi that you have. And that is a crazy difference that you can imagine, right? Imagine having double the healing fungi and the ability to fight so much longer with such huge buffs. Of course, this meant that the red camp had a very great advantage in this jungle. And of course, we were able to capture a lot of wonders and essentially became very hard to defeat. Because the other thing that you have to note is that if you have such a strong start, you have so much extra buffs, and to add to that, you have the ability to travel further than the bull camp, what's going to prevent you from simply going into the initial areas, capturing most of the high buffed up structures before the blue camp, and beating the blue camp if they get there first, and then taking it from them? And that's exactly what happened, right? When you have such a large benefit to start off with, you can keep building further and further and continue to get even more buffs and makes it pretty unfair for the blue camp, right? Because you have that momentum and you can keep going and keep collecting more and more buffs and the blue camp pretty much can't fight back. And as you keep getting more and more momentum, you are getting stronger. Now, of course, they did have certain things to try to limit the amount of benefits that you could get. And if you take a look here, there are limits on the total buffs that you could get. You can see that now we have already reached some of the limits. But think about it from this perspective. We do have a limit, which is a pretty high limit. 360% attack, 360% defense, and 145% health is pretty nice. But you also have to think of it from the perspective of the blue camp. They get buffs, and they also have, I think, similar limits. But if you keep taking the structures away from them, you're still harming the blue camp. You're still taking away their buffs. And if you're keeping them at a very low buff, it doesn't matter how many structures you take, as long as you're taking it from the blue camp, you are reducing their buffs anyway. So taking that into perspective, as you keep the momentum up, you can continue to get stronger, and you can prevent the blue camp from getting much stronger therefore making yourself the stronger team. So all of these things contributed to a fairly uneven jungle. Perhaps, you know, if they had matched the teams in a way that the blue camp was extremely powerful compared to the red camp, and then all these buffs came through, maybe it would have been a little different, but that of course wasn't the case. So with all of these buffs and all of these advantages, the red camp in most of the jungles, were able to dominate the blue camp, and of course they complained, and that is why certain changes took into effect. First of all, you'll notice that they did make an apology saying that this was the beta, and we're sorry for any frustration this might have caused you, and what they did was they did offer a pioneer reward chest to all camp rulers, so blue and red, and after opening it, you get one random Baron Ant or Vast Jungle Ant. And given that I'm a shooter main, I'm probably going to get a Carrier Baron Ant. That's my guess. The second thing is that they actually gave the Blue Camp a little bit of a extra gift, which is a Season Jungle Clover. And of course, they did say that this will only be distributed after the jungle ends. So that hopefully the Blue Camp doesn't quit. Now, for those of you who don't know what the Jungle Clover is, that's a reward that usually is limited to the winning alliance. And if you go into this, you'll be able to see what it is. You can trade the jungle shell of any jungle ant that you have, and in return, you get one ant that is either a jungle ant and a barren ant. And you can choose to either keep the shell that you give, or you can keep the new ant that they're offering you in return. So that was the first mail. And the second mail talks about certain differences that they added in order to make future jungles a little bit more fair. So the first one is essentially that tower trick that people used to do, right? They used to collect towers and create them. And then what they would do is on the next day when they actually need it, or, or let's say five days later when they actually need the clay, they demolish the towers and they'll get to 48,000 clay right in the start, like close to reset. And then they can jump really far because they just have full clay right at reset. They don't have to wait. That has been fixed. That's not going to happen anymore. If it's the next day and you demolish the tower, you don't get any clay back. The second thing is to do a little bit of a balancing thing. 
and that is that they removed the combat buffs in other season areas outside the land of clash and land of abundance for the golden acorn clamp. This essentially means that the 60% attack, 60% defense, and 30% health that we had everywhere as the red camp does no longer exist. Right, the buffs are now only going to be in the land of abundance and land of clash. They also change the amount of clay that is consumed for the red camp when building towers in other areas. So it's still 2,500 clay in the land of abundance and land of clash, which is the middle areas, but Outside of that, it's now 4,000 clay. So in terms of clay, now you are definitely at a disadvantage because now you are costing the same amount of clay to build outside of the land of clash and land of abundance. But of course, since you are fewer in number, you have less towers that you can do, right? So now we are looking at a standard 12 towers per day for each of the alliances, red camp and blue camp. And therefore, blue camp can build further. Now the fourth one is saying that after a specific season milestone is unlocked, the building and destruction speed of towers in the Land of Clash and Land of Abundance will be reduced. And this is in particular referring to a fact that I personally didn't experience in my jungle, but people told me that if somebody builds in the Land of Clash right now, like in the Beta Island, the Red Camp can destroy that tower very fast. And somebody told me something around 10 to 15 minutes going from 100% to 0%, and that is pretty fast if you think about it. So this is probably going to change that. And of course, they do mention this one effect island, the one that we're currently in. It's only for all of those ones that open registration after February 26. And they're also mentioning that if you leave the island early, you won't get the additional rewards that we talked about earlier. Okay, that covers a summary of our island and the benefit that the Red Camp had in the Beta Island and of course certain measures that might make it a little bit more fair in the future jungles as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, please subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below if you're part of the Red Camp or the Blue Camp and share your experiences because I'm sure there's a lot that I couldn't cover because I didn't experience it myself, but you can help us with that. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.